So today in this second video, I want to talk about the last of the 11 religions that uh, I've been focusing on in this course. And today our focus is on the Baha'i faith. Now, uh, I've spoken about a number of religions that are not so widely known. Zoroastrianism perhaps is not so, well, is not so widely known. Um, Jainism uh, also can fit into that category. And I think that fewer people have heard of the Baha'i faith. And yet the Baha'i faith today is a thriving, uh, a thriving religious movement with over six million members. And that's a sizable religious movement. And there are other uh, newer, new religious movements. The last great religious tradition, global religious tradition to arise was Islam. Uh, and in the years and the centuries since then, other traditions have arisen. There are parts of the world that are quite notable in creating new religious movements, Japan, uh, parts of Africa, Nigeria, for instance, Brazil, the United States, North America. These are all laboratories for new religious movements. And of course, the Middle East has always been um, the the birthplace of, of many religious traditions, along with India, India and China too. There's always been a great deal of religious activity uh, in China as well. And so the Baha'i faith is a religious tradition that arose in Persia uh, about 160 years ago. It has a very, very rich and interesting and even tragic but ultimately triumphant history. It's an inspiring religious tradition that has a, has a universal message for all of humanity. Um, and if, if we were to take only one idea from this short video about the Baha'i faith, uh, it would be this, um, that the Baha'i faith, above all, stresses unity, oneness, the unity of people in their languages, despite their languages, despite their different cultures, there's one humanity, the unity of humanity. And this is a reflection of the oneness of God. There is only one God, and God's unity is the unity at the base of the created order. And because God is one and humankind is one, ultimately, in an ideal setting, there should really, in the end, be unity in religion. And these are the three fundamental principles of the Baha'i faith. You might say the three onenesses. Uh, and uh, the, the scriptural uh, tradition uh, for, uh, for, uh, with, associated with the Baha'i faith is very rich. Uh, a central text is the, ki, is the Kitab i Akdas. Uh, perhaps I'll have a, a chance to quote uh, uh, from that scripture in a few minutes. Um, but uh, so the Baha'i faith, um, how to summarize that very quickly, perhaps just a few words about its founders, the word Baha'i uh, means glory. And uh, in the middle of the 19th century in Persia and in, in, in a society in which Shiite Islam or Shia Islam is the dominant religious tradition, um, there arose an extraordinary figure, a messianic figure by the name of the Bab. That was not his birth name. That was a title. It means the gate. And the Bab uh, presented himself as someone uh, who was a forerunner to or a precursor uh, to a great figure who was to come, um, the Mahdi. Um, and uh, this, of course, was an extraordinary claim. It would be as if in the Christian tradition, John the Baptist uh, or Elijah had come back from the dead to point to the coming Messiah. Um, and it was in, in, a, in a context of Shia Islam, it was as if uh, the someone was, the Bab was someone heralding the returning the return of the last uh, imam, the, the occulted imam, the imam who had been in hiding for some centuries. So his proclamation created a great stir of excitement in the Persia or Iran of that day. It led to uh, a mass movement of people uh, uh, beginning to associate themselves with him and putting, placing hope in his message. And it also, there also was a uh, a, a, a religious uh, reaction and a social and a, and a political reaction to his message that was not positive. Eventually, the Bab was executed, and it seemed as if his movement would perish. But from among his followers, the one uh, who was apparent, the one uh, who was awaited, uh, eventually uh, felt the inner call to proclaim himself as the one that the Bab or the gate uh, had, uh, had foretold. 
Um, and this uh, follower of the Bab, uh, when he uh, revealed himself, he revealed his name as well as Bahá'u'lláh, which means the glory of God. Bahá'u'lláh, the glory of God. And uh, the story the story of the persecution, but the persistence and the, the endurance of Bahá'u'llá and his followers uh, in the succeeding uh, decades is an inspiring story, and I would direct you to the website of the Bahá'í Faith to learn more about that extraordinary story. Uh, but Bahá'u'llá um, did not merely see himself as the, the Mahdi or uh, as, as uh, the successor to the Bab. He actually saw himself as, in his own words, um, in his own person, in his office as Baha'u'llah, uh, he proclaimed that in his teaching, in his words, in his revelation, which is a revelation from Allah, from God, all the dispensations, all the covenants, all the prophetic messages of the past, this is an extraordinary claim, have attained their highest and their final consummation. And so the prophetic activity of uh, Zarathustra and, of, uh, and earlier of Adam and of David and of Moses and of Jesus and of Abraham and uh, of the prophet Muhammad, uh, this of course is an electrifying and, and a challenging message. Uh, in his words, they attained their final consummation uh, in his teaching. It was God's latest and, and most comprehensive message to humankind. And as I've said before, this, this teaching is, is given quite fully uh, in uh, his book called the Kitabi Akdas or Akdas or the Book of Laws. Um, at the very center of, uh, of the Baha'i teaching is, a, is, a, is an interesting model of the relationship between the world's religious tr tr traditions. Um, and uh, his view is, uh, is a kind of an understanding of revelation as a progressive process whereby Allah, God, has revealed God's uh, character and will to humankind uh, kind of uh, bit by bit, piece by piece, uh, God has parceled out revelation to suit the, the differing capacities of human beings at different times. And so, as a consequence, uh, and these, these different eras of revelation, which are, which are the era of a specific prophet, are called dispensations in English. And so, there's a whole series of, uh, of, of dispensations, each of which is dominated by a prophet and a specific message. And uh, this, the, they're known as manifestations. There is thus a lineage of manifestations, of dispensations, which form a, the greater covenant. You remember how important in Judaism uh, the notion of God's covenant is. Well, there have been many covenants, many dispensations, and f they begin uh, uh, for, um, in, in one model with Moses, and then there's a revelation, a dispensation, a manifestation to Krishna, to Zarathustra, to Buddha, to Jesus, to Muhammad, to the Bab, and finally, and most comprehensively in the Baha'i faith, to Baha'u'llah. Um, and so what we see then is that on the, uh, this, is a, uh, this is a view of revelation which is not static, it's not singular, uh, and it is uh, progressive. It's not absolute. It cannot be absolute if God has spoken in different ways to different uh, societies using different language, different images, adapted to local customs and the developmental level of humanity in that period, then revelation is not absolute, but it's actually progressive. And consequently, it's relative. Each dispensation, each, ma each manifestation is relative to its context. And yet it's a continuous and progressive process, and wherever someone may fit in in this continuous and progressive line of revelation, one will find a real and valid and ongoing and life-healing connection to Allah, to God. And, uh, and uh, this, then, uh, is at the, ver the principle that allows a Baha'u'llah to see himself as the culmination of a long process, as, as he writes, as he wrote, prophets of God, that whole line I just read to you, should be seen as doctors whose task is to promote the welfare of people and cure diseases that split the unity and spirit of humanity. 
there's much more that can be said about the Baha'i faith, but probably uh, most important was, was the, is the social message of the Baha'i faith, which uh, is a, it's a, it's a completely trans-ethnic, trans transracial, transcultural, and transreligious movement. And it provides a model for how, I think, in our fractured planet, peoples of different backgrounds can uh, work together uh, in, re in satisfying spiritual, religious, and, uh, and cultural ways.